Hello, everyone. Let's check if everyone hears and sees us well. If everything is okay, please text something in the chat. Great, perfect. Great, right, thank you for the feedback. Great. All right, great. Uh, hello once again and welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is Alina and I'm a regional development manager at Galada Sky. Today I'm here with my colleague from Gurtam team. Today, Tim and I will tell you a little about how companies increase the efficiency of their agricultural business uh, with the most flexible Galaska hardware and the most customized violin platform. Yes, hello everyone. It's very nice to see you here. Like uh, your microphone is off. Could yes, you please check? One second. Can you hear me? Oops, oops. Okay, great, great. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it seems like we have some troubles technical. It seems to me that only you yeah. cannot hear me. Wait a moment, we manage it. Yes, hello, hello. can you hear me? Yeah, hello, yeah, yes, I can hear you great. now, great, perfect. Well, thank you for being with us uh, here today. My name is Tim, I'm an Im implementation consultant uh, uh, at Gurtum. And uh, yes, like Alena mentioned, we uh, will be glad uh, to tell you how using the advanced telematics devices and advanced platform you can achieve uh, great results in agricultural telematics. Great. Firstly, a few words about the webinar. Today we'll talk about a few aspects of such a global topic as telematic in agriculture. In particular, opportunities for working <clears throat> with geofences and fields, and also discuss why integrators choose Galileo Sky and Violon <clears throat> as the core of their monitoring system and how they do this. As usual, uh, the presentation will take about one hour and the record will be sent to all participants, so you can share it with your colleagues who didn't have an opportunity to join us today. During the presentation, you can text all questions you might have in the question tab, so we will answer them in the end of presentation. We also have the chat where we can share your thoughts and ideas with each other, so please welcome. For the start, uh, let's define key challenges which agriculture companies need to manage. It will give us a better understanding how telematics, what telematics can bring to the agriculture industry in order to achieve new results to reach new level of efficiency. Based on our and our partners' experience, we highlight the following general issues. In particular, how to harvest and store crops without loses, how to control time and accuracy of fields cultivation, and how to use the equipment more effective and avoid malfunction and downtimes. And what do Violon and Galileo capabilities help to our partners to manage all these issues? And to be honest, all capabilities, but let's consider a few specific, in particular, how to manage all the processes to complete everything in time and with the highest accuracy. How to monitor the harvest amount and storage conditions to reduce losses, no matter if it's about grain, milk or other resources. And of course, to monitor parameters and the equipment operation and analyze how to improve parameters of each customer's units. Uh, let's discuss how it's available. And start from the processes control and automation. Uh, what can, we, can you do? Uh, 
First of all, you can use identity Identific uh, identification uh, by iButton keys or Bluetooth tags in order to create a flexible system uh, for access control. You can also create driver's profiles uh, on Violon to read them, if it, I mean to read the drivers if it's necessary. Next, uh, there are wide opportunities to work with JFNCs both inside the tracker and on Violon. For example, you can divide uh, fields into different JFNCs and appoint particular vehicles and drivers on them. And you also have an opportunity to integrate and connect any periphery when it's required by your project, when it's required by your customer and by your new tasks. Let's see how it works with one of our untypical projects where the integrator automated wine production. The whole production process includes several milestones from seed storage to bottle transportation. So each separate stage requires uh, a separate solution and a separate control system. Let's have a look at them in general. Uh, here you can see the general six steps and the first and the second stages are about uh, the microclimate control with various temperature and humidity sensors. So when any parameter temperature and humidity should be changed, the tracker sends corresponding commands to the climate aggregate automatically without human operation. At the same time, all the equipment can be managed manually by a dispatcher, for example, through sending commands from Violon platform to the tracking device. The third and the sixth stages imply control of proper operation of special machinery, both mobile and stationary. And the fourth and the fifth are about shipment, uh, about shipment of crops uh, only after it's measured and the worker is identif identified. So, uh, all of these sub-processes are now automated with different peripherals, but by the only brand of GPS controllers and the only software solutions. Well, uh, go further. The next challenge uh, we mentioned is the harvest control. So, what amount was loaded in fields and what amount was delivered to warehouse? What amount do we have currently? What kind? How it's stored? So, Telematic provides different ways to receive this information for users. For example, identify trailer equipment with Bluetooth beacons to be aware that the right trailer arrives. Connect specialized sensors to measure different types of row. Integrate them via easy logic algorithms if it's needed. Connect the tra tracker to different units and assets to monitor and report their conditions and any many other features you wish. For instance, a few years ago Russian granary owners faced losses of tens of millions of dollars due to grain thefts. Du uh, during shrinkage and cleaning, grain loses weight and as a result workers have an opportunity to disguise grain manipulation as natural losses. Therefore, agriculture companies turn to telematics capability in order to develop the system which allows to control access to grain elevators and bunkers, control grain level with ultrasonic sensors in real time and measure the volume taking into account natural changes of the grain state. The developed solution was approved by Russian Green Union so it's now deployed by the majority of agriculture companies across Russia. Uh, the, last, uh, the last question we will focus on today is how to improve product, productivity of machines, machine, uh, machines and assets. And this is an absolutely unlimited field of work for the integrators. Flexibility of monitoring system based on Galuska devices and Violon platform allows to solve al almost any task you have. In particular, uh, monitor conditions of combined tractors and other machinery through CAN bus, connect external devices like weight or pressure sensors, photo cameras, even solar panel panels if it's needed, or integrate any new one when it's necessary. If it's needed, display crucial information for the driver on the tablet or smartphone, for example, temperature inside their refrigerator, axle load or trailer ID. And finally, check downtime reasons and minimize them. 
this task has always been some kind of pain of for all companies, especially in, in the agriculture industry. Sometimes even a short downtime causes significant costs or losses for the company. To, uh, the crop was not delivered on time. Milk was not delivered on time as well and was overdue. The stop of one wine, one combine caused a dis disruption in the whole production chain. The crop was not harvested on time, and etc. Therefore, it's uh, very crucial to fix downtimes in case of occurring and analyze the reasons in order to predict and avoid them in the future. And let's see how this issue is solved in practice by Violon and Galilovska users. One of our Russian partner has developed very um, quite simple but very effective solution to fix downtime reasons. They built a system which includes Galoska Tracker, a tablet, and Violon platform. These three companies are linked by a special easy logic algorithm which has the following logic. When stopping, the driver has to indicate the reason on the panel. Reasons options are detailed in several levels. Uh, so the driver does choose relevant ones, one by one. If the reason is not indicated during a few minutes, a buzzer is, is activated to notify the driver. After, ta after eliminating the tone time cause, the driver cancels the stop by pressing the special button on the driver panel. And next, the information about the tone downtime is sent to Violon server for further analysis by the company management. As a result, the algorithm allows to record the information about stops and collect the statistics for more detailed analysis of equipment operation. And please notice that is the general structure of the algorithm only. Only a few general steps without additional conditions and actions. So if it might be interesting for you, we have more detailed a description of this process on our website galovska.com so you can study it and if you need additional details please welcome uh, please feel free to contact us we are ready to describe it more details well uh, this is uh, this is how the solution is done on the hardware side and now i'd like to turn the floor over to tim he will, he will demonstrate how the collected information is processed on the software side. So, Tim, please welcome. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Alona. Uh, now we are proceeding with the case discussion. But uh, before we jump to real on settings, uh, let me just uh, uh, briefly tell you how this case uh, has been born. So, um, as Alona mentioned, um, this case um, uh, originally uh, was implemented in uh, Russia. So, we can say that this is a country with the uh, developed agriculture. And um, a big number of users in uh, Russia, I mean end users, they are using uh, special machinery uh, for agriculture operations. So, um, one more thing, um, the machinery and vehicles that uh, these users are using is usually uh, like high efficient. It means that uh, it should be working most of the time because, um, because if there's idling, it means that uh, some expenses uh, appear and um, and customers uh, are starting to uh, lose the money. And uh, another reason is because um, usually such operations as uh, harvesting or sowing are, um, must be done within a limited uh, time frame. Uh, because that's how agriculture works, if you are not uh, doing this um, on time, it means that you put your uh, harvest and you put your crops in uh, danger. So uh, this leads us um, to the fact that uh, idling usually costs a lot for uh, end users. 
And in this particular case that our partner has implemented, it's like um, they say that even uh, 20 minutes of idling cannot be uh, neglected because again, this leads to uh, high cost. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, so this is why um, our partner um, uh, decided to implement this solution that uh, will allow uh, the end user uh, to reduce the idling. Uh, and um, one more important thing is that um, the end user also wanted to uh, see the reason of idling because um, if you're using regular hardware and uh, just a regular platform, you can see that the vehicle is not moving, uh, it's idling, but uh, you cannot see the reason. And um, this is not the case because uh, the end user wanted to uh, reduce the idling and he also wanted to see the reason because there can be different reasons for idling. Um, so this is why, uh, our partner has interviewed them and asked a couple of questions to identify what are the main reasons of idling. And um, he managed to discover a few reasons for idling. So um, the first one is the, uh, some technical problems, you know, when the vehicles cannot uh, move for some reason because of mechanical problems or because of, uh, clogging there occurred. Um, and, but there are also some other types like, for example, logistics problems. If we are uh, harvesting the grain and, um, you know, uh, the machinery that is harvesting the grain is called uh, combine. So when the, uh, when the bunker is full, it means that uh, we, uh, we cannot continue harvesting because the bunker is full, the machinery is full, and uh, it, lo it waits for another vehicle to be unloaded. So this is why uh, it's, it's, ki it's a kind of logistics problem. Or for example, um, such combines, they never return uh, to the fuel station. Uh, there are special vehicles that deliver fuel to such machines because um, these machines are slow and it takes a lot of time to refuel. So uh, refueling can also be considered uh, as another logistics problem. Um, also weather or soil conditions, uh, when, uh, when, you cannot, um, when you cannot start harvesting or doing some other op operations because uh, it's too wet or it's too dry, and uh, another main reason that uh, our partner managed to identify is the changeover. Uh, when the drivers are working in shifts and um, you, need to, uh, you need to change the driver. So um, after identifying these reasons, um, our partner invented this solution which allows the driver uh, to select the reason of idling. And um, in, this, um, in this case, uh, he used Galileo Sky device um, uh, with easy logic technology and also uh, a driver panel with some buttons. Um, this is like a separate uh, physical device that can be connected and um, using to the tracking device and using um, these two solutions, like this, the hardware. Uh, the driver can uh, select the reason of idling. And uh, just uh, one important addition is that um, the driver is obliged to select the reason of idling because uh, otherwise um, he will uh, hear a buzzer signal and if he ignores this signal then uh, the idling will be counted as a rest and uh, the driver will not re receive uh, his salary. Um, 
so uh, that yeah that was the hardware side uh, but uh, once the driver uh, selects the reason for idling uh, this information will be sent to uh, VLON and then um, we can see uh, how this works on VLON so let's uh, do it now just one second Can you see my screen now? I mean, uh, VL on screen. Okay, great. So um, here we have uh, here we have a Galileo Sky device. It's uh, seven point zero, but uh, but it's because the project uh, has actually been implemented a few years ago. Um, now you can use uh, newer Galileo Sky models like 7x um, because it's um, because it's a customer data we cannot show you some sensitive information you know like IMI number or plate number but anyway um, I will show you uh, I will show you um, how the configuration is done so as soon as we receive the uh, information from a device and um, as you probably know Galileo Sky devices can uh, send uh, a great number of parameters to to monitor so here we have things like ignition uh, fuel level sensor um, even trailers are sent as well but the main thing is that we have here is that um, uh, we've got a sensor created for each uh, idling reason. So you can see here emergency idling, uh, saddle, um, sorry, logistics idling, technical idling, uh, routine idling, soil idling. So for each uh, of uh, the reasons, for each of possible reasons, we have um, a sensor created. Uh, and that's how we are able to use sensors in reports. So for, 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 those, for those of you who haven't heard about VLON before, we, uh, we can um, create a virtual sensor for uh, each parameter that uh, the tracking device is able to send. And then um, as soon as we create these sensors, we are able to uh, monitor, to use them in uh, real-time notifications and also in reports. Um, so as you can see here, uh, for each idling reason, we have uh, the uh, custom digital sensor created. And uh, that's uh, how we can control idling reasons. And um, there's also uh, a common sensor for all of the reasons to uh, show uh, to the fleet owner. So you can see that uh, there are different reasons like meal break, technical break, weather conditions, soil conditions, waiting for repairment, um, repair works, and lots of other um, idling reasons that uh, the driver has to select uh, using the display. As soon as we have uh, sensors created, uh, as I mentioned, we can use them in um, um, in notifications and also in reports. So let me show you how it's done. Uh, you have um, we have a notification panel, and uh, here we can uh, and here uh, we can. Uh, select the vehicle which will be put under control like in this case it's a tractor then we can uh, select the notification type now we have idling notification but in this case we will not be using this so actually uh, we need uh, sensor value notifications uh, because um, we created custom digital sensors that act 
um, as on or off. So we will need to use uh, sensor values and then we can select uh, custom di digital sensors because these are the sensors that um, we uh, created uh, for idling reasons. And then we will put one to, to the settings here. And then on the next step, we can select how we would like to receive our notifications. Uh, Real-time notifications can be sent to your email, to, your, to the fleet owner by SMS or to Telegram Messenger. Uh, they can also be displayed in a pop-up window uh, and uh, they can also be sent uh, to the mobile app. If you install our mobile app from Google App Store, uh, Google Play Store or App Store, iOS App Store. So um, that's one of the means, real-time control. Um, like in this particular case, which has been implemented by our partner, he, um, he has a control center. He actually has a manager during the high season when uh, the most important operations like harvesting or sowing are done. And because he has a uh, control center, the manager can uh, identify the problem in uh, real time. So it doesn't take a lot of time to fix it uh, using this feature. But uh, also uh, the customer is using the reports and that's one of the reasons uh, why this solution has been uh, implemented. So we've got um, the report that is called uh, types and reasons of idling. So basically it's, um, it's a report that will show you activation and uh, deactivation of uh, digital sensors. So you will be able to have uh, type, beginning, end, duration, and um, uh, driver. One second, I will switch to presentation once again. Okay, can you see presentation now? It's good, thank you. Okay, so, um, yes, yeah, so uh, regarding, uh, regarding the um, idling, how do we see it on VL1? Uh, we can see um, such things as number of idlings, then we will see uh, reasons. Uh, we can also see the most uh, idling vehicles on VL1. Uh, and worst drivers with the, uh, with the maximum number of idling time. Uh, and of course, idlings by uh, geofences. Right now I will show you an example of uh, such a report. So it's actually um, a report example, but because the case was in Russian, I had to translate it a little bit for you. Uh, so that you could have uh, an understanding about it. So um, as you can see, we've got uh, the reason of idling here. Um, again, it's, uh, the information is based on a digital sensor, like technical idling, soil and weather idling, scheduled idling, technical um, emergency idling, and some other things. Uh, so you can see the beginning, end, duration, uh, driver, and uh, we also have grouping applied here uh, by date to be able to identify the, uh, the date and also the uh, unit with uh, idling. And uh, we also have uh, the total amount um, and uh, yes, total duration of, of idling. So um, that's... Um, that's um, that's an example of the report. Um, and um, now let's see what kind of benefits um, the customer has got after receiving this solution. So um, using uh, Galileo Sky devices, um, EasyLogic technology, sensors, and uh, VLON, 
the uh, customer um, now has um, the ability to observe all, uh, all of the data uh, from vehicles and he also has assets. Um, now he can see the reason and type of idling and uh, because he can uh, see this data, he can now make uh, some decisions. He can analyze the data, uh, he can find uh, the most common reasons for idling and uh, if it's a human factor, then probably he is able to um, to minimize the human uh, factor. For example, if uh, the customer uh, managed to discover that most of the idlings are related to drivers, you know, being lazy, then in this case uh, he can have a conversation with the driver. Uh, and if it doesn't help, then he can take uh, some action. For example, if drivers continue to idle, uh, then in this case, uh, some fines can be imposed on drivers. Um, and this solution uh, can be advanced even further. So actually, because we have an API, you can pull the data from uh, reports and uh, you can uh, use it in uh, your own ERP system and this is also the case uh, with um, our partner. So he actually developed uh, a, an application on top of Yellow, and um, in this uh, application, he, um, he well, he's just pulling the data from Vialon, like ready-made data, uh, not only idling but uh, also such things as uh, working time, fuel consumption, uh, and some other parameters uh, uh, using Galileo Sky devices. And um, he basically designed an application that um, combines this data and um, uses some kind of formula to calculate the efficiency, like working time versus idling and versus uh, quality of work that has been done. So the same can be done uh, by you. You can uh, use uh, our API to pull the data and then uh, you can uh, use it in ERP systems. Yes, uh, so that was the uh, case. Mm. I guess that's, uh, that's it. And now we will be glad to answer your questions. Yeah, uh, yeah, we are sure that you have some questions. So please feel free to text them in our question tab. So we will be glad to advise you. So, uh, before new questions appear in the chat, uh, we had uh, we saw a few questions in our chat tab, so let us point them. So the question from Elsa: What type of sensors do we use for grain level? Uh, if uh, thank you for question firstly, and if you mean uh, some sensors which I mentioned in case examples, so our partner uh, integrated some ultrasonic sensors. Uh, currently, I don't have uh, an information about a particular brand, but if it's required, we could check the information with our partner and send you exam examples name. Uh, however, uh, if you have some specific sensors you consider to use in your project uh, or for your customers, just let us know. We will investigate if this opportunity can be done via easy logic algorithms because the majority of cases can't be done with easy logic scripting language. So in case you have some sensors, then we sh could help you to integrate it if it's needed. So you can use almost any sensors. The question from Jorge, it's a tablet. Uh, could you please specify what do you mean by tablet? Do you mean like application? Um, do you have the links uh, to the software demo? So Tim, I assume that the question 
mostly to you yes uh, we uh, we can provide you uh, with the demo with the trial I think we will uh, our team will contact you after the webinar now we will will be able to provide you uh, the demo F fully functional like account with reports notifications etc uh, the, the next question from Zebra please show me any control panel while on for of any the user in any form so Tim please welcome yes um, so control panel um, um, Yeah, sorry, <laughs> just trying to understand the question. Uh, so, um, could you please specify like what kind of control uh, panel do you expect? Uh, is it like for sending commands to tracking devices or is it like more uh, for uh, like seeing all the information about your vehicles, uh, like the dashboard? I hope that uh, Zebora uh, will explain. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, so um, let me share my screen one more time. So um, the end customer will be able to see this interface. Uh, there are a couple of uh, tabs uh, in this interface. Uh, so first of all, there will be a dashboard showing you some uh, statistics about your vehicles, like um, how many vehicles are idling at the moment, how many vehicles are moving, uh, and some other uh, information, like for example, uh, vehicles inside geofences. Uh, quite often, our customers uh, create uh, geofences. Uh, like, like, like here, you can see uh, that there's a field uh, created. So you will also be able to see uh, vehicles uh, with geofences um, that are inside geofences. And um, lots of other information, actually. Uh, so this is like a dashboard that will show you some general statistics. You will also be able to uh, see some uh, vehicles on the map. Uh, like here is a city vehicle, but you will be able to see uh, your agricultural machinery as well to like real-time information. Um, whether the vehicle is moving or not, uh, battery level, some other things. Uh, and uh, your customers will also be able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to see reports tab. They will be able to uh, run reports to see some uh, history data, like trips report, uh, idling reasons, any kind of report. And they will be uh, able to uh, see like notifications uh, as pop-up windows. They will be shown in the right upper corner of the screen. So this will be useful uh, if you have a control center that I mentioned, uh, because there will be a pop-up window and then uh, you will be able to click a button like to handle that uh, notification. So this is the interface of uh, like our software. And um, if you are interested, we will be uh, really glad to show you more because normally it takes um, some time to show you all the opportunities that we have. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so next question from Elsie. Which brand of ultrasonic sensors do we use? Yes, uh, as I mentioned, I don't, um, I don't have currently the specific brands, but if it's required, we could check uh, which one our partners used. So I could share this information with you after the webinar, I guess tomorrow. Uh, please explain more uh, on the use of virtual sensors. Tim, so yeah, it's one yes. addition to violent platforms, so yeah, please show it. 
Yes, I will uh, share my screen one more time. So actually when I was talking uh, about virtual sensors, it's just uh, the way of uh, configuring uh, uh, the data um, on our platform because by default uh, the device will be sending uh, lots of parameters like for example battery level, uh, GSM signal strength, uh, things like uh, HDOP uh, or um, RPM, for example. So um, all of these parameters like will be sent as a raw data and um, if we would like to use them in VLON reports and in VLON notifications, we just uh, need to create uh, sensors. So we are sort of like binding the parameter from a device with some uh, real definition. For example, in this case, uh, we are uh, we are having a voltage sensor. We just need to uh, specify the parameter. So it's just like a technical uh, thing uh, which is used to uh, configure everything. Um, you don't really have to be an expert in this because our team can assist you with sensor configuration. Uh, sometimes we even have uh, ready-made presets. Uh, so it's just um, more like a technical thing. Um, because by default you don't need to monitor um, all of the data that is sent by the device. For example, uh, not many customers need GSM status. Of course, uh, this information may be useful, but most customers will need uh, something um, different, like for example, ignition state or battery voltage, but GSM uh, signal may not be like really important. So, uh, yeah, this, this is just the way of working with our platform and um, yeah, we can, uh, we will be glad to assist you in sensor configuration, including uh, Galileo Sky devices. We have a nice video on our channel, uh, which describes how to configure um, Galileo Sky 7.0, I believe, but mm, there's not a big difference between like newer models or older models. Um, and the next question from Henry. Uh, does Galileo Sky provide certificate of electrical testing? My country require electrical testing report in order to use imp imported electric devices. Yeah, Henry, thank you for the question. Uh, if it's necessary, we could provide you with test wrappers we have, so you can use them for your certification purposes. Uh, there are uh, several several uh, testing results mentioned there, so you can use it, I assume. Uh, we could discuss it after the webinar, more details, so you agree if this test wrappers will be acceptable for you. Uh, please explain Hectara up, Tim. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I will share my screen one more time. So Hectara application uh, is also a VLON based application. Uh, and it was uh, specifically created uh, for uh, agricultural monitoring for uh, those customers who would like to monitor fields. So uh, the idea of this application is that uh, you create some fields on the map, like geofences, uh, and then um, using uh, um, tracking device like Galileo Sky, you are able uh, to see how your machinery, how your tractors or combines uh, are moving along this field, uh, making some operations. And the main idea of this app is that we can uh, control uh, how this uh, cultivation and handling has been done. So for example, uh, in this case, we've got uh, the cultivated area which is uh, marked in green then we have uh, we can uh, switch on omissions to see um, to see uh, on the map um, that uh, the driver is not doing uh, his job very well so we can see that there are red lines on the map they are omissions and most probably like the driver was not like uh, doing his job very well. And we can also have some general statistics like uh, how many 
uh, what, what is the area that has been already cultivated in percent. Uh, again, overlaps, we can also track them. And uh, also emissions uh, as well, they can be tracked. And um, so the manager, uh, as soon as we have this information, the manager, the fleet owner can decide if the work on this field has been done properly or not. Uh, if, he if he decides that it's okay, then uh, we can um, like, uh, we can approve this uh, as a, a job that has been done. Um, but if, um, if, for example, if something is not okay, we can talk with the driver and uh, we can, uh, I mean, the fleet owner can um, make him to redo the job. So that's the uh, main idea of uh, this application, is to control how fields uh, are uh, handled, processed, like various operations, like harvesting, sowing, uh, all of that uh, can be done. Not only that, we have uh, different operations, but the main idea is that we control uh, how fields are being cultivated. Thank you, Tim. Uh, the next question, do you have this is C marking? Yes, we have Freightness, so we are ready to share uh, uh, the declaration, the conformance declaration, so just free to ask us about it. Well, uh, in case you have any question, we don't we haven't answered yet or you have a project or technical task you would like to discuss now please uh, feel free to text we are ready to advise more properly now yes same here with vialon if you have any questions related to vialon please feel free to reach us um, and we will be glad to answer your questions Okay, uh, in case there are no new questions, we would like to mention that our colleagues will launch the quiz here, so please take uh, one minute to have a look at this to complete it. Uh, during you you fool the quiz. Uh, let me let me and him uh, thank you for joining us today. We hope the topic was interesting for you. And if you have uh, some new questions or some new details you would like to learn more, please feel free to contact uh, both uh, Galileo's and Guten team. Uh, team and I will be glad to advise you more properly to tell more about some uh, examples, some cases we shown you today. So if uh, you have any questions, please welcome. We are always uh, glad to help you, to assist you. And I hope that this topic was really interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you and we wish you to have a really